and we are live good morning how we doing everybody i hope everybody's having a blessed sunday man i know i am and i got my coffee with me right here and a glass of water i'm set to go and man i'm so excited today guys man you don't want to miss this today in the push power to power show man we are having you know let me read his bio so you'll know who i'm having as a guest today for the for past 12 years, Vishal Sarkar has been a real world public speaker, a life mastery mentor who has been speaking on stages around the world for some of the biggest companies, including Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, etc. Many of the Fortune 500 companies in the world hire him to train their top leaders to help them achieve more personally and professionally to help them increase their confidence, productivity and profit while maintaining top notch balance in life. Vishal does not speak bookish knowledge. The only place he speaks from is personal experience and decades of wisdom he's got from big failures and bigger successes in life. Let's welcome the author of the book, I Love Public Speaking, Vishal Sarkar. And sir, did I get your name right? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Vishal Sarkar. I know a lot of people mess up my name, but you did not. You know why? Because you are Jesus. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do. I did mess up um, one of my friends here in Houston that I had him in the show. I messed up his name. He's like, did you know that you just said my last name wrong? I'm like, man, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I get that, man, completely. But thank you for having me on the Push Power to Power show. I will, I've been on, you know, many different podcasts for the last couple of uh, weeks. So, you know, glad to glad to bring a lot of value to your show today. Yes, yes, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here. And I know the viewers that are setting up and getting up. I know it's Sunday, but a lot of people are still getting up and and getting their grind on, hustling and and writing, you know, and trying to see what they're adapting to this new world. And I said, this is the best time on a Sunday. God bless. We're still here. We're still awake. And um, yeah. it's amazing that I'm just passing the torch to you. So you, I want the audience to know who you are. Tell us a little bit about your story. Where are you coming from? Yeah. Uh, what most people know about me is that, uh, you know, I, I have created something called the Balanced Life Mastermind, which is the most successful elite level group of people, um, you know, in Asia who come to, you know, it's the most successful mastermind to become more successful, and ha you know, achieve more happiness. I run India's most practical public speaking course. Most people know all that, Jesus, but what most people don't know about me is that that's not how I started. I was born and brought up in a very small town called Shiliguri, and I, I was born in a middle class family. You know, people often ask me, hey, were you really born in a poor family? I said, no, I was not born in poor. I was born in a family that's worse than poverty. This is middle class. Middle class is always worse than poverty, right? It's always worse than the poor because in the middle, it's always a problem. If you're doing very good in business, very good. If you're not doing good at all, good. You can do good. But the middle is always the problem for anybody. And that's how, that's where I was born and brought up. I went to a Bengali medium government school. So growing up, I did not have communication mastery. I did not have any networking skills. I did not know exactly how to communicate with people. I had no clue how to connect with people. I did not know how to add value to the marketplace, had no clue all that. And then later on, I failed a lot. Um, I was bullied during my school days, not by students, but by a teacher for four consecutive years. Four years into 365 days so those many days of being bullied by one english teacher in my school days and that inspired me that i don't not only i don't want to be bullied but i'll turn this abuse into my advantage i'm going to repeat what i said right now. i'm going to turn this abuse into advantage and that's what i did that's when i got this this in indian we, you know indians we call it zid that that stubbornness that that positive stubbornness i got that i'm going to be a master of communicator but I still did not know how. So I, I started speaking, you know, I started going to, you know, start ended up my education, my formal education, started working um, in, in different corporations. But my still my communication was one on one fine. But I still had this problem of, uh, you know, not being able to speak in front of large crowds, 15 people, 20 people, 25 people, you know, medium says crowd, I always had a problem. So I was very good at speaking to people one on one, but not in front of groups. And that's when I started learning the skill because any skill can be mastered. Any skill can be learned, right? It's, it's not about your talent. It's not about your genius. It's about your skills because remember the skills pay your bills, skills pay your bills. 
and and with skills you actually get the wealth to actually you know help other people and once i did that many people started coming to me and asking vishal how how do you do that you know can you teach me how to be a great speaker in my current profession can you know and these are not people who came to me to become professional speakers they were like cas chartered accountants it professionals in the beginning this my friends and colleagues i said absolutely i'll be happy to teach you and then i started getting more and more invitations and then i started a different e-commerce business back in the day um and left my job and i started and i used my speaking as my advantage to differentiate myself from anybody else and after that i started getting calls from companies like microsoft cisco and all that and that's when i started my professional speaking journey and i never looked back so now what we do is we train the top level ceos it professionals finance professionals hr um, managers you know entrepreneurs and all that we train them how to be not just a polished speaker but how to be prolific and powerful communicator so you can make a change in the way you speak um and i think i think also it comes back to come back, comes back to your life experience because one thing i believe jesus is the height of your the, the height of the pinnacle depends on the depth of the foundation and everything i've gone through including the bullying including um many of the failures in business in in my health and all that you know that has given me the substance for me to take the protein from if you know what i'm talking about i have taken the nutrient from that soil of failure and i've left no stone unturned in my journey and i continue to learn that uh because i feel the the deeper your roots the sweeter the fruits and everybody here whoever is listening right now i'm telling you that you turn you can turn your mess into a message when you know how to take the take the take the protein from your failures and and make yourself strong because the height of the pinnacle depends on the depth of the foundation wow i like that the depth of the pinnacle it, it's 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 what well, were you talking about the public speaking i don't even remember how i myself said man i want to be a public speaker or i want to be a, a speaker you know because i was like man i will, i mean i'm not afraid of talking to people but i was like it's different when you're in the stage and you're yeah. like, talking to more than five or 10 so like in my mind i'm like oh man but i'm already good talking to people on camera and stuff and i still remember the first time i went out to speak like um i speak at a church one of my mm -hmm. friends i haven't even talked to him in a long time i got to reach to him he said hey um i talked to the pastor and he said you he'll let you a couple of minutes so you can talk to the church and um and he let me and then they call my name i was in the paper you know how they, the churches get you the little paper i was that was yeah. pretty cool i should have kept that Right. And then they call my name, and you know what? When I went in front of that, the topic that they were the church that I was talking was the topic that I was gonna talk about. That was like, wow, like God. God had a plan for you. I supposed to talk. About. Yep. And uh, it was great, man. I talked, and, and um, and I, I'm what like, was the topic? Oh, it's not nothing to be afraid. Ah, oh, what was it? Mm, man, it's been a while. It, this was like maybe two years ago. I don't even remember the topic. Okay. But it was it was a blessing topic. And 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 when we finished, I told I told my friend, hey, you know what? Uh the pastor, what he said, that's what I, I was gonna talk about. He's like, see, God knew that you know it was your <laughs> time today and it yeah. was time for you to shine. And and I got invited to be back there anytime that I wanted to go. And and then yeah. from there I just started speaking on different uh about bullying, like you were talking about bullying. I got um there's uh uh in here in Houston, Texas, they have a um uh, I know a lady that does bullying with her, with their sons. So I'm one of the speakers every year that when they start doing about the bullying and, and I like this because a lot of parents and a lot of kids go there. So, I mean, the kids are the future. So I love talking to most of the kids and it's, all, yeah. it's, it's just great. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Good for you. Happy for you. Oh yeah. And I saw, I mean, I saw a couple of your videos, um, what yes the, all of the days that i've been hearing from your page and i was like man the one that um you were in that white coat and you, i think you were teaching the the <clears throat> the guest that was there um, yeah. not to be afraid or something or God, right that was that was a very impact that was great. <laughs> thank you I, like, thank you thank you <laughs> so so the people that when you're uh, mentoring them and um when you're speaking uh, some of them do you know some of them you know they they want to uh be like a speaker too and they are afraid to be on the stage 
Well, I, I have variety different kinds of groups that I run. One of the one of the groups I run is called the Confident Speaker Live uh, Workshop Group. So this is for people who are, you know, vice presidents of companies, CEOs of companies. Their goal is not to be a professional speaker. Their goal is to be a better speaker in their existing job or in their existing business. So because sometimes they have to speak in front of their team, in front of their senior leaders, they have to pitch different ideas in front of their investors and clients and customers. And you know this, which is you might have a billion dollar idea, but if you don't know how to sell that billion dollar idea, you have zero. Because if you're not first, you are last. In business, in real life, there is no second place. The, it's first or last, baby. And so what I train them is, I, I not only give them the knowledge, because they most of them, because I don't work with beginners, I work with people who already have the substance and the knowledge, the technical expertise. Um, I turn them into world-class, you know, people with world-class speaking and world-class public speaking skills. That's what I train them on. We train them on their confidence, their connection skills, their body language, their manners, their movement, how they, how to effectively communicate that message, how to add, you know, humor in your message to make sure that people think, oh my God, who is he? You know, the ultimate sign of confidence is not, not that you're loud. The ultimate sound of confidence is not that you know a lot. The ultimate sound, ultimate representation of confidence is when people say, oh my God, I don't know who he is, but he's a somebody. I don't know what his name is, but I want to know his name. I don't know what he does, but I'm sure he's a freaking genius. When people say that, that's when you know you are really confident. So it's not about actually being the loudest, loudest person in the room. It's about adding value and believing in yourself. Because when you really believe in yourself and you have the proper way to communicate that, because there are two things. Number one, the way you look at yourself. And number two, the way the world looks at you. Both are important. You know, a lot of coaches say, just believe in yourself, believe in yourself. You know, I know a lot of people who believe in themselves a lot and they are not good at it. They, they believe that they are good singer, singers. Uh, the audience has a different view. So it's not just about your belief, but also about do people believe in you? Because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. People hire people that they know, like, and trust. People promote people that they know, like, and trust. So you have to change the way you look at yourself for sure. You got to be more confident, have more self-image, better self-confidence and self-esteem. But then you have to create that self-esteem in your audience's mind and heart about you. They have to trust you. And I call, tell it all the time to my clients, you know, trust plus respect equals loyalty. Like write this formula if you're taking notes, guys. Trust plus respect equals loyalty. And loyalty in today's world is the ultimate royalty. <laughs> Trust plus respect is equals loyalty and loyalty in today's world is the ultimate royalty. So ask yourself, you know, how can I gain more trust from the audience? How can I gain more trust from people? But it, because if you have stage fear, you might have 25 years of experience. But if you're shaking in the first two minutes of your audience, I'm sorry to say people are not going to trust you. They're not going to respect you. They will not be loyal to you just because of your knowledge. Everybody has knowledge. Google has freaking more knowledge than you. People can go on Google and find more information. Why do they need you? Because of your personality, because how much you believe in yourself and how much of trust you can bring by your telling your personal story, you know, talking about your real philosophy and then bringing some real value, giving tips and golden nuggets like I'm giving right now. And that's when people say, man, man, I want to be like him. And that's the ultimate sign of a leader right now. And, and right now, as you know, in today's world, we need more leaders than any time before. Like, like we need it all the time. And I'm not talking about people with leadership roles. People with leadership characteristics, because most people, Jesus, ha are, have become people pleasers, not people leaders. They are pleasing people. They are being the yes man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. They're just being that version instead of actually leading people to the greatest self. So whether you have a leadership role or not, whether you are father or not, whether you are grandfather or not, whether you are boss or not, doesn't matter. It's time for you to take back your leadership charge. Because remember, trust plus respect equals loyalty and loyalty equals royalty. <laughs> Man, you, you just right there, uh, there, there was one thing that you said that grabbed my attention too. Um, that like you said, you want to be a speaker or whatever you want to be, you know, but you believe so much in yourself. Yes, you got that gift, but I learned that you need to get feedback. You need to get comments. Oh, yeah. If it's, if it's hate, if it's hatred common, but that's how you know that there's supporters, that there's people out there, you know, trying to believe in you. Because if you just believe in yourself and you're like, I got it, I got this. But you never do anything. I mean, you're doing something, but nobody's actually supporting you. That's like, whoa, am I doing something wrong? That's how I, I, I realize right now. I've been telling everybody, just give me feedback. Give me comments. Right. It's, it's very gonna important. It's not going to hurt me. I mean, it's going to help me because the more I read comments, the more I read the, the, the even the hatred comments, I'm like, oh, man, that's cool because 
maybe I did something wrong. Maybe maybe somebody's telling me, you know, hey, change the way you're doing this. And then uh, and you're like, okay, the next time I do a video, the next time I do a pre-record or something, <laughs> yes. then I can change it. And it's funny because when you were saying this, yesterday while I was interviewing my other guest, um, there was somebody that came in and, and um, texted me and said if they had some ideas that they can tell me that I was doing in the show. And I was like, yeah, man, that's fine. Because he has his own show too. So those stuff I love because it helps you. If yeah, somebody's and- looking at you, like, hey, go ahead. Right. Right. No, sorry to interrupt. But yeah, I think I think that's very valuable what you said. I really appreciate you for saying that, that you're going to be open to the feedback, because I think most people have what I call a Nike disease, Nike syndrome, N-I-K-E. It's a small little formula I want people to remember. Nike stands for here in this formula. It is now I know everything. Now I know everything. N-I-K-E, Nike. Now I know everything, meaning I'm not open to new ideas. I've learned it all. That's, you know, I don't have Nike syndrome. That's why even after being the highest paid speaker in India, you know, with with all humility, I still have coaches and mentors that give me feedback. But it has to be the feedback from the right people, not from the wrong people. I'm not going to ask, you know, get feedback from from just anybody. I want to make sure that I'm getting qualified world class, not just opinion, but 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 feedback from people who have experience. Like you said, your guest has a show and give you feedback. That's amazing. What you shouldn't, you know, what we shouldn't do is take feedback from random people who are just beating their opinion. And for example, my grandfather, he's very old. He he always, um, you know, sees TV and, and the cricket, the game cricket. And he always shouts, oh, my God, he should have had a four or you should have hit sixer. My grandfather has never played a freaking cricket in his entire lifetime. He's not qualified to give feedback about the you know, cricket thing. But another thing, for example, one example I can give about the feedback is know who's the end receiver if i'm creating a for example jesus one thing i do is i feed 22 street dogs every single day as of today of the recording every day for the last couple of months i feed 22 dogs every night um street dogs i feed them now one thing i've learned about dogs is if i want to feed dogs i have to find what food they like think about it if i create a dog food company bishal's dog food corporation i have to, i can like the dog food i can be obsessed about the dog food and i take the dog food the dog doesn't like that's real feedback <laughs> you know, everybody can like the packaging, the branding, everything. But does the dog like the food? No. Did, did, you, did the audience like your speech? No. That's feedback right there. That's feedback right there. So it doesn't matter if you like it. doesn't matter if anybody says, oh, my God, very good, very good. Did the audience like it? They did not. That's feedback right there. So dog food analogy is something that people should always, always, always remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what are your projects or something that you're working on right now since i don't know how it's over there in india with um the yes. covid 19 it, it's are you still uh quarantine or you can or like yes. some businesses are open yeah 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 it's it's we are in quarantine in most of the places there are some red zones and orange zones and stuff like that but i think everywhere people have to understand one thing that um that it it's not about going out and when it comes to speaking or even businesses Ask yourself, you know, how can you like see the opportunity in that? I was giving, uh, I was speaking in New Delhi, which is the capital of India, Jesus, few few months ago. And one of the speakers who was invited to the event said this one thing. He said, if you see the statue and the rock in church or temple, whatever, if you see the statue and the rock, you will never see the God in that. But if you see the God Mm -hmm. in that, you will never see the statue and the rock. (laughs) <laughs> so if you yeah. see the God, you will not see the statue. If you see the statue, you will not see the God. Same way, it can be COVID-19. There can be a flood. There can be epidemic, pandemic. There can be different situations. But how you show up in those difficult situations in businesses, whether you have a job or business, if you panic, that that's who you are, a panicker. But if you practice, you become a practitioner. Um, you know, we have two kinds of leaders in the world, situational leaders and leaders who are you know who sustain themselves so situation leaders you know who are always going to say i can run great business when there is no competition when there is no problem when there is no raining when i have enough capital when i have enough investment ready when i have enough team members when i have scaled my business but substantial leaders are people who say you know i have 29 problems or 99 problems but i'm going to find one differentiating factor that's going to differentiate my business because if you don't distinct you extinct so that's what that's what I tell people right now. People who have jobs, how can you be the best at what you do? How can you be best doing doing what you do? You know, the best at what you do because the best fucking beats the rest. 
the best beats the rest so you got to be the best at what you do doesn't matter and that's where i i tell people always you got to sweat in training baby you got to get mentors you got to hang around with the right people the more you sweat in training the less you bleed in war people often say man i'm insecure about my job see this is the war the war is giving you feedback that you did not prepare enough for this time not just money wise but skills wise because if you had enough skills if you had the right high income skills if you had a great presenter a great leader if you brought enough business to the organization you work for if you if you created a personal branding for yourself you would be getting promotion i just a quick little example for that is you know la, uh, this is not no joke but in the last two two weeks our business has grown tremendously we are actually hiring more people right now we are i'm getting hiring more coaches in my team we am scaling my business even further we are getting more and more people joining our team more and more people joining different programs because we believe in opportunity everybody needs communication everybody needs to be, live a balanced life so ask yourself how can i create a distinctive branding not just packaging wise but branding is not about just the outside package brand branding is about the what's your in your inside if you take a orange um fruit and if you squash it tomato juice is not going to come out banana juice is not going to come out it's it's orange juice that's going to come out so when with the more you sweat in training and make yourself strengthen from the inside that's when you actually whether it's covid 19 or there are many more things that's going to come in near future you're going to shine like a bright star instead of hiding in the darkness amazing man <laughs> that's what i'm talking about man yeah that's what i'm saying that's why when i tell the people and um like right before i got in here somebody put me in a small group where another entrepreneur you know he just recently started his vegan um bakery he's vegan okay i think um i'm gonna have him uh monday as a guest he asked me hey man i just started my business he said i'm trying to get into podcasts and i said yeah man sure you let's do it monday he's like all right and right now he created a group like with maybe 20 or 30 people and I just told them, you know, a little bit about what I do and um, about the show. And most of the people are like, wow, that's amazing. They love the, the name of the show. They're like, yeah. I'm going to go and, 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 and see you right now that you're going to uh, interview somebody from India. And I was like, that's cool. And he put me in, a, in that group. So other people are, you know, getting to know me and getting to, to, to you know, serve them because you never know if some of them in there, they want to start their business or, or they're afraid or they need this, you know, a little bit about uh, uh, talking of you, like you were saying branding because a lot of people get confused with branding or, or or people like me when i when i was starting my other businesses that i failed i was like man you we always think that we need everything oh man i need to get this i need to get this i need to get this and this and you're like man just run with it and then yeah. see what you what happens through it that's what i learned through the years because at the beginning i wanted yeah. to be perfect no, I need to get the DBA or the DLLC or this. I, I cannot start yet. Let me let me look in the computer. And then time passes and you haven't even actually start. And you're, sometimes you're like afraid to start because you're seeing different people telling you this and that. No, and I realized that when you have something, just, just go with it, man. You learn yeah. through the waves, right or left, if it's right for you, if it's wrong for you. And, and, and I mean, you meet mentor coaches. Like you said, you need mentor, you need coaches. That's something that I learned that through the, through the through the years having different mentors, different coaches from different niches, it it helps you a lot. Yeah, and like what you said is very important that you know got to run with anything you got right now instead of waiting for the perfect time. I think most people are waiting for the perfect time, the perfect weather. Uh, let let me let the con COVID nineteen get over, then I'll start. This is this is the language of average people. Lang, you know, language of average people, world class people say right now, it can be the one day or day one, one day, most people have a one day syndrome, one day I will start running, one day I will start writing, one day I'll start thinking big, one day I'll start betting, taking better care of my wife, that one day never comes, the wife also agrees, <laughs> it should be a day one, I start everything from today, from day one, right now, because right now is the time for me, and, and here's why, here's why, gotta understand this, you cannot make an omelette, without breaking the eggs <laughs> you cannot make an omelet without breaking the eggs most people say i want an omelet i will eat the omelet i will like the omelet and then i will probably break the egg doesn't happen that way brother you don't go to an engineering college and say teach make me an engineer and then i'll pay you the fee for engineering you gotta you gotta invest in yourself not just money i'm not talking about just money investment but the time the energy the effort the prayer the focus, the commitment, the confidence, hanging out with the right people. 
that's what most people do, lack right now and what you said is is so true that you got to run man when i started you know 12 13 years ago as a speaker i had um, i did not know anything man like for now for now we have a real company you know we have a like organization that's growing i have team players you know high performance team is what i'm creating different coaches in my team that that work with me and also people from you know digital marketing video editing you know administration um operations and stuff like that but in the beginning today i was i was the only man i was a one man army i did not know i remember getting a call from a corporation of, it was not a big corporation a small medium sized organization getting a call from them and back then i used to take my own calls i did not have any assistant or anything like that i got a call and they said we want to hire you for a speaking I, i was like you know jumping up and down but on the phone i sounded all professional like mm mm-hmm, okay okay and in the in the inside i'm like man <laughs> thinking yes it's working right and i remember them saying hey can you send us you know um uh, your one sp- your speaker sheet and maybe a you know agreement we can we can sign and get started as like okay sure i'll send it to you in next one hour and after hanging up i was like i don't know what is a contract what's a speaker contract you know what what's a speaker profile well, i i didn't know anything about that because any time you speak at a larger organization you have to have an agreement we have the invoice structure and all that all these things now i had no clue but guess what i did not wait for the perfect time i learned i googled i called a few friends i said hey can you show me how you do this i got some mentors i asked them and but i i didn't you know stop just because i did not know how knowledge is not your problem it's the implementation of the knowledge because because information without implementation equals suicide i'm going to repeat what i said information without implementation equals suicide most people get too much information they want to know everything and then they get, they want to get started it doesn't happen that way you want to be a better speaker st- get started now you want to be, be a better husband do something today get a flower if you don't know how to get a flower from a store just go to go to a garden of a neighbor get a rose get something just do something now it's not about perfection it's all about connection so i i think it's uh, it's very thing very important that um that you you don't wait for the perfect time and make excuses but you take action now does that make sense to you yeah oh yeah man and and i know that everybody that is watching is making sense because like i said i'm putting putting me on 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 the spot because that was me you know yeah. trying to put excuses and and trying to wait like that was me too yes time. yes it's funny because you sit down and you're like damn five years pass and i was saying next year oh the you know the year ends and you know you're like oh what are your focus for the new year and you're like oh i'm gonna exercise i'm gonna do this and then you're already in april or or may like right now and you're like man did i even start it what i said on on january and you're like no and and then since you already have way you're like you know what i just wait till december why wait I mean, like i was in my mind i was like what is it gonna do for me waiting nothing nobody's out there telling me you know hey do this do that is you the one who's gonna have to lift up yourself and be like all right i'm gonna do it i'm gonna start writing i'm gonna start my show or let me go out there and knock on some doors and and, and let's see what happens let's see that feedback or maybe absolutely that stuff is not for you absolutely absolutely see to join the top one percent of the people health wise relationship wise money wise if you want to be the top one percent you got to stop doing the bottom nine percent work meaning you have to stop doing what the 99% of the people are doing making excuses all the time you know that's not how you do it you got to prepare you got to uh, you know one thing i think people don't understand because they are so accustomed to seeing all these you know um bentley photo and uh, dif- you know look at my lambo look at my jet look at me you know all those all those gurus they forget that it takes a freaking work to be successful it takes you know it takes work to to do what you do i remember once upon a time one of my mentors gave me this advice he said vishal be so good people are going to like what i'm going to say next jesus he said here's what he said be so good as a speaker that the only question people have in mind is who's the second best speaker who will come in the second spot because they know the moment they see you that you are the best you are the best speaker you are the best at what you do so be so good you got to out prepare everybody i might not have the best talent i might not have come from a from the from the richest family at all i did, actually not just the richest i did not even come from a rich family at all came from middle middle class but one thing i had is man i had heart 
I had the grinding mentality from day one that I'm going to make it work no matter what, no matter who supports, who does not, because I understood one thing. I have to break the omelet and I have to get the right feedback from the right people. And now what I teach people, you know, when I'm mentoring IT professionals, project managers, vice presidents, CEOs, entrepreneurs, finance professionals, I tell them all the time, never do dodge and presentation. Oftentimes people have this mindset that, oh, I'm not ready for the presentation today. You know, I, I don't have the perfect preparation. So I'll make some excuse, not go to the office or maybe, you know, maybe delegate it to somebody else. Dude, you're not going to learn it by delegating the, the work to somebody else. Nobody can do the push-up for you. You have to do the push-up for yourself. So I, I always tell people all the time, you know, make a list of 10 things that you're avoiding doing out of fear. 10 things you're avoiding doing out of fear. What 10 things? It can be a game changer exercise for people. 10 things you're avoiding out of fear. And number two, ask yourself, who are the top five people who are already doing those things? And how I can, how can I start hanging out with those people? Because you become who you hang out with. You become who you hang out with. And you are the average of the five people that you hang out with the most, as Jim Rohn said. So if you hang out with five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth one. If you hang out with five people who are making excuses, broke, don't have learning mindset, you're going to be the sixth one. So be so good that the only question is who will come second as an entrepreneur, as a podcaster, as a speaker, as a presenter, as a vice president in the company. So you don't have a fear of losing your job, losing your name, losing your reputation, losing the opportunity, losing the confidence. Because you're winning, baby. You're leading the way instead of actually being the person who's being led. That's very important. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Have you been over here to the United States? Not yet. But I've given speeches. I have many clients who have come from United States, UK, Qatar, different countries. Uh, I've done a lot of virtual trainings. I have some clients, one-on-one -on -one coaching clients who are from US, but I've not physically been there yet. Okay. Yeah, I have a, I have a lot of friends there, though. Um, that he got invited to go to India to do a, to speak. That was cool. What's his name? That was like that. That was last year. His name was uh, is Joshua Webb. Okay, don't know him. Yeah, he went. I don't know what part of India, but he went out there. Like he was, um, he was happy. Like, oh man, I got invited to go here and right. show me the pictures. Like, that's that amazing. Cool, you know, that's amazing. He, yeah, he I, was happy. That's because, amazing. India is a great country, man. No, nobody who comes to India is sad. Everybody that comes to you should come to India one day to speak. You should come to my event and and when we're gonna turn you into a world class speaker. And one thing I always another thing I want to say right now is times are changing. You know, I used to travel a lot uh, from place to place. I, I used to travel a lot for speaking training. I stopped doing that because, uh, you know, without any arrogance from all humility. Now what I say to people is, if you want me, you gotta come to me. <laughs> Meaning, if you wanna if you wanna do a course, send your people to my program instead of you hiring me to your company. I used to do that. I I travel from time to time. I do a lot of speeches these days. I'm doing I don't know, man, five to between ten to not five, uh, ten to fifteen virtual speeches and trainings every week on a weekly basis on Zoom. Um, and you know, a lot of companies are hiring. They are doing a lot of shows as well, like like I'm on right now. So we have different groups, the the mastermind group coaching call. But times are changing, and you have to adapt to the new technology. Um, and you know, who was that? Charles Darwin. The he said that the species that I forgot the exact wordings, but you know, the the species that gets uh, rewarded or dominates a place is not the best, but the person or or the animals that are most adaptive adaptive to change. So you got to change based on the timing, because if you don't upgrade yourself, you downgrade yourself. And um, that's uh, in your skill set, your mindset, your business model. Times are changing. And you know, a lot of people had no clue what online business is all about two months ago. Mm -hmm. Now they do. Now, now they do. Yeah. Look, but now they are not prepared. They're thinking if they just if I just do a video or Facebook live. Dude, if you have a Facebook Live, that doesn't mean you have a business behind that. You know, what's your business model? Most people don't know. And I know a lot of people are selling a lot of different courses like become a millionaire speaker in two days. Come to my this, come to this, come to that. It doesn't happen that fast. One thing I teach people inside the Balanced Life Mastermind. Um, for example, you know this, Jesus, that, you know, you know, a lot of people uh, have a lot of professional success, but their personal life is a big struggle. Or maybe their personal life is going well, but their health is having a toss. Or their health is fine, but maybe their finances are not strong. 
or maybe their finances are strong, but you know they don't have the purpose in life. There's always something missing. Because of that, they have a lot of action, mm. but not satisfaction. They have a lot of lot of things going on, but they don't have that happiness. So what I do is I train them. That's what the Balance Life Mastermind is all about. It's about having it all and creating a proper balance. It's not about just work-life balance. Balance life, again, is not just about creating a work-life balance. What we do is we help you design, develop, and live your ultimate powerful balanced life in all different areas of your life, in all different areas of your life. Because one thing I believe is you know a quote from Emerson, who you are, speak so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. Who you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. I know a lot of professionals who give a lot of, you know, dialogues. They, they say, be on time, be a great leader, always fo follow the truth, be a follower of God or, you know, all that. Always be learning. But they don't, they themselves don't do that. So I, I was having a conversation with uh, one of our mastermind members, Nadi. He works for a company called Cisco. You know, we were having a conversation just recently and I told him, or um, that, you know, children don't do what daddy says. Children do what daddy does. Hmm. So it's not what you're saying, but it's what you're doing. And always remember your family, your team, your community, the people you're leading will do half of what you do right and double of what you do wrong. So you got to be careful. They're going to do half of what you do right and double of what you do wrong. So... You, you have to be a good example as a leader. Um, and it starts with you. There are four levels of leadership we teach inside a program, uh, four levels of influence. First of all, the influence with yourself. If Yeah, you got it. The influence with yourself. Second level is influence one-on-one. -on -one. If you're having a phone call conversation with a client, a team member, your child, a one-on-one -on -one influence. Many people are very good at influencing themselves, but not to the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you got to listen. You got you to gotta listen to what they are saying, but also listen to what they are not saying and understand their model of the world. The third level is one to many influence. This is where you are speaking on a stage, you're giving, you know, you're, you're leaving a legacy, you're inspiring people, you're doing exactly what you're doing right now, Jesus, as well, because, you know, digitally you're speaking one to many, right? You're speaking to a lot of people from, from one place. And the fourth level of influence is what I call legendary influence, where you are making an influence to somebody without you being there without you being there. Steve Jobs, he's not here, but we become influenced by him. Mother Teresa, or you create programs and courses and videos and podcasts and shows and write a book and blog. And you, without your knowledge, when you're sleeping at night, snoring at your home with your wife, somebody else from other part of the world is reading and watching those videos and says, oh my God, my life is changing. That's called legendary leadership. So I want people to do an audit. Where are you right now? Are, are you at level one? Are you at level two? Level three, level four, because one thing I can tell you, if you're at level two or three without mastering level one, it's a matter of time because before you come to level zero, it's just a matter of time. If you have not mastered yourself, but if you think you are a great speaker, it's just a matter of time before you get exposed, before people find out that you're actually being a warning. You're doing, talk, doing a lot of talking, but you're not actually being that person. Because like I said, Emerson said many years ago, who you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. So leadership is a being, not just a doing. I was remembering something right now that when you were talking, mm -hmm. I had, um, I was, a couple of months ago, I had the number one transformational speaker. And uh, he told me something that it just came to my mind while we were saying, see, this is like the hot moments for like write it down yeah. people. You know, he said that uh, he reached to the top of the mountain. And when he was at the top of the mountain, he was like, he was happy that he made it, you know, but uh, like you were saying, sometimes you don't know how they feel. Uh, they're struggling in other ways. And he told me that somebody else, another coach and mentor told him that sometimes you're going to get to the top of the mountain and it's not what you really wanted. It's not what you really wanted on your heart to do that. And he said, man, you know what? When he told me that I looked at the other mountain and that other mountain that was over there, that was what I wanted to do. And it's, he told me, and it's very perfectly fine for everybody. He said, when you were watching to write it down, if you get on top of the mountain and you realize that, that, you know, you made so much money, six, seven figures, but that wasn't truly for you. That's fine. You can get down the mountain and start the other route and go climb the other mountain. Nobody's telling you that you cannot climb as many mountains as you want. 
Nobody's telling mm -hmm. you that you're never going to make a mistake or that maybe that gift wasn't truly that gift that you were trying to do. Maybe it was something else. But through the ways you you connect it, you build relationship. And at the end of the mountain, you're like, this is, wow, this is the wrong mountain. My mountain is that way. <laughs> That's crazy. Absolutely. Man, man. You're, 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 you're never going to be happy if if the staircase, you know, or the ladder you're climbing is attached to the wrong building. Right. Um, so there are two two philosophies that comes from the story that you just now said. One is most people are doing that. First of all, they are climbing a mountain without actually knowing if that's their mountain at all. So they are climbing the wrong mountain. And, you know, it's like the guy who says, I'm going to be happy after I'm 45 when I have three children and I've made this month much of money. How do you know that you're going to be happy then? Right. Because at the end of the day, we are all looking for more fulfillment. See, we want achievement for fulfillment. People don't understand that. I'm going to repeat what I says. We want achievement because of fulfillment. Everybody, I'm going to drop a little bomb right now. Get ready in 10 seconds. <laughs> Everybody does everything for one reason. They want to feel a certain way, but they don't want to feel happy. They don't want to feel peaceful. They want to feel better. They want to feel better than they're feeling right now. That's what we do. Everything we do, we, I take shower because I want to feel better. I eat because I want to feel better. I, I sleep because I want to feel better. I impact people because I want to feel better. I give speeches around the world virtually or face-to-face -face because I feel better. Every We all do to feel better. But if you understand that, I, I understood this thing from Tony Robbins. There is a difference between happily achieving something and achieving something to be happy. Oh, man, I'm going to repeat it. There is a difference between happily achieving and achieving to be happy. Most people are achieving to become happy one day, 15 years from now. They never get there because the moment you get there, it's like the goal has gone to the next level again. So it's it's a never ending, never ending journey of happiness. That's one thing. Second is there are people like you and me, for example, Jesus, we already have happiness in our hearts because, you know, we work on ourselves. But at the same time, we want to achieve more. We want to help more people. We don't satisfy. So that's the second level of the mountain. That once I achieve the mountain, like I say all the time, once you go to the top of a mountain, what you should focus on is the bottom of the next mountain. Always, always, always be happily dissatisfied with your last success. Always, always, always be happily dissatisfied with your last success. Many times, you know, this is a challenge I have. Not challenge. Sometimes a difficult conversation I have to have as the as with my love uh, lovely life partner. You know, she does something. She's like she's a wellness coach and uh, a trainer and and a consultant, and she works in my business too uh, as a partner. And sometimes when she achieves something good, she comes to me and she's like, "Hey, I've done this." I was like, "That's amazing." We celebrate and and she thinks that I'm gonna celebrate for days. I don't do that. It's it's a moment, and I tell her all the time, "You have done this good. Now what? What's the next thing?" We celebrate that right now. Let's cut a cake. Let's have some fun. Let's talk about it for the next 30 minutes. Fine. But what's the next mountain we are going to climb? Because you got to be very happily, again, happily dissatisfied with your last success. Once it's done, it's done. What's next? What's next? That's how you grow. Otherwise, you're going to give one speech and you're going to think, oh, my God, I've given that great speech today. And, and that, that becomes your pride and your ego instead of that. That's how you push power to power, baby, by, by going to the next level. Push power to power. Um, so Abu, it was, it's a quote from Lance uh, Armstrong, the athlete. He said, cyclist, said a boo. You know, the audience, sometimes you get a boo from the audience. Like boo means bad. A boo is a lot louder than a cheer. A boo is a lot louder than a cheer. So the boo means a failure. Um, or maybe you're giving a presentation You've given five, but one didn't go out well. You know, oftentimes people will say, just focus on the good. That's fine, but also focus on the bad. Otherwise, how will you turn the bad into the good? You know, if you don't focus, you know, there's an old saying, slow and steady wins the race. Well, what if one person is slow and steady and I'm fast and steady? Who's going to win the race now? The fast and steady. <laughs> so fast and steady wins the race, not the slow and steady. So you got to be fast. You got to work on your strength and your weakness as a speaker. That's why you got to get a coach, somebody who tells you, this is how you improve your body language. This is the mistake you're making in your voice. This is how you drop truth bombs and, and catchphrases. As, as you can see, I, I speak a lot of phrases different in, in times of speaking. That is like a punch phrase. And if you can imagine a Microsoft Word document, it's like the bold and underlined version that I that I do while I'm speaking. So you got you to gotta speak like that, that some words people feel, man, 
That was like some truth bomb. How do you do that in your presentations when you're doing technical presentations, face-to-face -face presentations, virtual presentations, leadership talks, one-on-one -on -one conference calls? People should always feel better in your presence and it happens when you're prepared the right way. Uh, most people don't have that. Many people say, I, 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 I believe, I believe in financial freedom. I believe in being improving, you know, being an improved speaker. I believe in sp spending time with my family. And one thing I've learned over the years, Jesus, is this. Deepest beliefs equals daily behavior. Deepest beliefs equals daily behavior. Your deepest beliefs are, are shown in your daily behavior. If somebody says, I love fitness, but they don't put fitness regime into their daily behavior, daily routine, they don't believe in fitness. You know, many people talk about, I want to help people. Uh, recently, I was having a you know conference call with some CEOs and people, and a few of them were saying, you know, I believe we should stand together. You know, those inspirational talks like poets, we should stand together and we should help this world. And I said, guys, I have a question. He said, they said, what? I said, how much have you contributed so far in the last 30 days? There was a silence. I said, sorry to say, if you have not contributed, you're not qualified to talk about contribution. Money contribution, of course, time contribution. You don't become, you know, a genius just behind the laptop. Don't become a great contributor just thinking about things. My father told me one, one day, he said, Vishal, do you see that, you know, street person, the, the beggar in the street? I said, yeah. He said, your sympathy does not do anything for him. Giving food to him and teaching him how to get the food on his own will change his life. So contribution, baby. You know, your deepest belief. If you believe, do it. Show your beliefs in your doing, not just in your Facebook status and your WhatsApp status and your big, big dialogues that you do with friends. It, it's it's got to do it. I believe in consistency. I write every single day at 9.45 a.m. and send an email to thousands of people who read my daily mentor emails. I believe in giving consistent, uh, you know, great content. I believe in giving 10x value to, to the people who are part of my the Balanced Life Mastermind. It's I believe in spending time. That's why after this call, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off my laptop, shut up, shut up my phone, shut up my system. It's going to spend time with my family. You know, gotta gotta just be there. Um, I can say I I oh I only if I could help more dogs. Go feed one dog. Give him some cookies. I feed 22. Doesn't matter. The number is not the number is irrelevant here. What's relevance is you gotta you gotta apply that. So again, deepest beliefs equals daily behavior. <laughs> Man, 10x. That's how I got the, to change my name. I was watching um, Grant Cardone. I was watching a video. He was talking about the push power to power. And I was like, oh, man, this is, this is you know, I'm going to change that. Because when I started the show, you used to call the, the Jesus Ortiz Diary Show Teaching for Success. And I had that for four years and a half. And Glad you changed the name. You know and then I was like, I looked at Grant Cardone and I was like, the push power. And then I, I just came to yeah. my mind, the push power to power show. And boom, yeah. and I changed the name. And then you know what? When I changed the name, I saw I saw my logo. And I was like, oh my God, maybe God wanted me to change the name. My logo has a power sign, a red power sign. Right. So I was like, right. this is so perfect to it. It's the push power to power. My name, the logo is my initials, J-O, Jesus Ortiz. And, and the O is the power. You have the power to turn it on, to turn it off. So exactly. have, That's everybody so has good the thinking. power to turn, to turn your on or you turn your soul off. Nobody, yeah. no mom, not your friends, nobody. You are the only one that has that finger and the power to push it. Either you, like you said, right now I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to spend time with my family. I know that when I turn it on, I'm going to get back to business. Exactly. Exactly. Man, I so love that, the, the story behind your branding. So innovative and creative. And again, um, you know, I, I so much love your show and so far, and I know we still have a few minutes, but I wanted to just show you, give you my appreciation because I believe silent gratitude is useless. So I want to say thank you again for, for putting this great show up and you're helping so many people right now uh, by bringing some of the greatest experts in the world. Um, and, and I appreciate you being who you are and speaking. And I'm glad you changed the the show name because this name is much more sexier than before. The push to power, push power to power show is a great name, man. Good branding. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's why I'm like, man, it's crazy to know that that I changed it without me realizing that my logo, you know, was that until like recently, you know, a couple of months. I was looking at my logo and I was like, oh my god, 
that's crazy. And then my mom looked at it. She's like, she was the one that figured it out first. She was like, don't you see the letter O? It has the yeah. power on it. Oh, <laughs> the push power. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy. I'm like, hey, that's why you never know, you know, when you change stuff and then you realize later on that it meant to be that way. It, it's good to change. Right. It's never good to just stay. And that means in every way, in your personal life and business and everything, you, you cannot be the same person. Yeah, you got to be humble. You got to be, you know, and happy and good, but you can change anything, man. You can um, progress every time you can progress and make yourself better and better and better and better. And I, and by the time you get better and better, somebody is looking at you and you can help them out. Give them some tips, tricks, you know, that this is how I did it. For you, it might be different, but this is how I did it, you know. It might help you. It, it might not. It might help somebody in your family. You never know. Change is so so powerful. I know when I, when we think about change, there is a very old quote: um, "Change is the only constant thing." But that's not the quote I want to talk about right now. What I want to say is understand that if if you don't change, I forgot who said it that um, the marketplace will discipline the undisciplined people <laughs> the marketplace mm. always disciplines the undisciplined people a lot of people thought that uh, you know the virtual conversations and all that ah, i don't need to learn that the marketplace is disciplining you right now it's spanking in the ass you have to do it right mm. now and i'm, I'm actually I'm, i'm a consultant for many of the businesses so many of the business people right now leaders and entrepreneurs are coming to me they had great success great businesses made, making millions of dollars uh now they are dry as sand and they're coming to me like vishal can you consult with my team how we can communicate better digitally so you know digital public speaking skills digital presentation skills how we can incorporate that or can you i do a lot of turnaround in businesses you know looking at their marketing systems i don't do a lot of business consulting anymore because you know i'm very good at it i know but that's not my passion really my passion is transforming people because i know when i transform people they transform the businesses there because business is all about people anyway uh, but one thing i all, one thing i tell them is all the time is if you are always going to do what you always did you're always going to get what you have always got times have changed baby and 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 here is a good news times are going to change even further now even further after that oh yeah so if you don't adapt and if you don't upgrade your skill set if you don't get the public speaking skills if you don't you know change your mindset and if you don't create a balanced life because what we teach in the balanced life is a lot about productivity peak performance high performance mindset your growth your focus your financial freedom if you don't get all those things right after this world is changed and after the lockdowns are over you know after everything is back to normal it's going to be an upgraded world and you're going to be a downgraded version of you it's not going to fit mm. right so so you have to upgrade faster than the world so you're always ahead as a leader and i think most people don't do that because they don't understand that rome was not built in a day most people think that oh you know they they can you know change a lot and read some google articles and youtube videos i i call them 24 hour experts you know they think that just because they know a little bit of information about covid-19 or health or relationship because they read a book they think they are an expert in that field 24 hour expert man it takes years and years to become a master at what you do you know you don't become master in in 24 hours even 24 months it takes time It, it you know and and persuasion is better than force most people are trying to force themselves i'm sure you can see that jesus many times right now many businesses that are feeling insecure they're trying to make more sales right now they're calling more please buy this buy in bulk give us more money right on the phone they're bothering you we don't do that we don't be, i don't believe in um chasing i believe in choosing i don't believe i need to sell i believe i need to select and i don't believe in pressuring i believe in persuading with ethics ethics and ethics honesty is very important as a speaker for anybody you want to be a professional speaker or presenter in your company or a vice president are you ethical can you look yourself in the eye and say that you're honest if not i mean all the achievement is going to make you feel more empty achievement without spirituality is a suicide but also spirituality without achievement is empty you need to have both the the achievement side where you're going 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 achieving more but also the spiritual side where you're taking good care of your body yourself you're spending time with you you're spending you know you're feeding the uh, the underprivileged children or the dogs or you're doing some contribution you're thinking um 
And spirituality does not mean just going to a temple or a church. It's fine. I mean, you can go there and it's amazing. I, I, I support that fully, but doesn't mean, you know, spirituality does not happen just on a Sunday at 11 a.m. for one hour in a church or temple. Spirituality is what you practice 24 hours. Like I said, deepest beliefs, you know, equals daily behavior. Um, so if you if you believe in God, see, if, you, if somebody does not believe in God, your behavior will convince them about God. Your behavior, not your words, your behavior. Mm. So if you say, God, I, I love God, but then you go and throw stones at dogs, you don't believe in God. You just believe in a statue, right, that you call God. So it, it's love. And the ultimate ultimate love is L-O-V-E, L-O-V-E, love, letting others voluntarily evolve. L-O-V-E, letting others voluntarily evolve. Once we do that, Jesus, we know. And by the way, your name is Jesus. So. You know, it's natural to you. You're Jesus, right? So um, letting others right. voluntarily evolve, you know, helping your team evolve, helping your people evolve. And um, it's important, but also they have to take action because as a leader, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. You know, they have to be self-start, not push start. It's not that, you know, there are some team members, people tell me often that I have to push my team, I have to push my team because you don't, you have a bad team. They have to be self-starters, not push starters. So where they, they are self-motivated, all you have to do is give direction. Give direction without wasting time. Um, yeah, man, this is, uh, this is good stuff. And we spoke about so different things. Yes, Leadership man. to public speaking, to mindset, to freedom, to, to God, to dog. <laughs> that, that, that's good. It's like I tell people, um, it's unscripted. It's what oh, you yeah, when you're hard and humble. When I started the show, I did script it. I, yeah. I, before I went in the show, like with you, I would call you before and be like, Hey man, this is the questions that I have. Is this fine? Do you want to add more questions? So people will add more questions. So we go through the questions. And then after that, the audience were the ones that were telling me, Hey, you know what? I mean, we want to know the real them. We want right. to know the real. So I was like, storytelling. So like, right. they want to know their story. They want to know who they are. They don't want to know the end. They want to know how they started. Exactly. They, want to know if they, you know, lost everything and they're living in a car. And how did they live from the car to that two million dollar mansion? Right. right they want to right. learn that because that's yeah, exactly. How, that's not the world is right, right. now. They yeah, I love that. That's why I love your show so much. I love your show so much because it's unscripted. You know, a lot of people send me a lot of podcasts to care sometimes, and I say no to them. Not always, but and I'm not saying it out of arrogance, by the way. I'm saying it because I'll tell you the principle behind it. And many times they tell send me all the questions. I was like, dude, it's not a conversation. I mean, let's just go script, you know, unscripted. I mean, you, you can, we can have a frame, we can have a structure, but if you're sending me all the time, I mean, why do I need it? That's why, you know, like you said, you used to do the question answer, used to send the questions to the guests beforehand. I'm glad you don't do it. Like I had zero clue what you're going to ask me before, like, you know, you, you hit record, right? No clue at all. And this is also a principle I teach speakers and I tell them this. If you want your speaking flow to be continuous, I'm going to repeat, it's going to be so good, man. People are going to get chills. It's, it's a public speaking tip. Get re right there, okay? Yes, take notes. If you want your speaking flow to be continuous, you must be spontaneous. <laughs> if you want your speaking mm -hmm. flow to be continuous, you have to be spontaneous. Oftentimes people tell me, Vishal, in the middle of my presentation, I forget my points. Can happen can happen. What do you do then? Well, I stop and I apologize. Oh my goodness. If you apologize to the audience, then all they are focused on is you making the next mistake. You don't apologize. You, you say, and there are some tricks and techniques we teach inside the programs in our world class speaker intensive, but or the balanced life mastermind too. But I tell people all the time, you got to be spontaneous. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can mug up a presentation and just go and vomit, but it takes a real speaker to go there have preparation, but also understand that it's not always go, gonna go the same way that you prepared, that you thought of. You know, Mike Tyson said many years ago, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, <laughs> when you're when you're speaking, giving technical presentation, leadership presentation, speaking to clients, pitching to investors, what if in the middle of the presentation somebody somebody's phone goes on? What if in the middle of the presentation, somebody um, asks a tough question that you don't know answer to? What if the PPT goes off? What if there is a load power cut in the room? How do you handle those situations? That 
that's what defines a great speaker not in your mugging up 25 different points or questions that's not so remember if you want your speaking flow to be continuous you have to be spontaneous that's very true that's that's some stuff that i learned on the way too i'm like you can yeah like you said you can be you you can have all your stuff ready but you never know anything can happen anything can happen at, at that one second and, and you cannot apologize you have to be spontaneous you got to be like all right this happened all right guys you gotta have to use your personality you know who you are you gotta open yeah. up different and this like that and then maybe at the end you're like you know what guys you know this happened and i actually all this stuff that i just said right now was just something that it was not made up but it was me first changing up things because it didn't happen the way that i wanted to people are gonna be like wow but you already finished you didn't tell them at the beginning or the middle you tell them at the end they're gonna be like damn that's great because something happened he didn't stop he didn't apologize but he went through it with a different way and he still did great or her <laughs> Turn your mess into message. A lot of people, a lot of speakers, as you know, they, they talk all the good stuff, but they're they are very insecure about talking about their darkness. I have zero problem telling you, you know, in the show, and I say it openly about my mental health challenge in the past. I had, I went through severe depression. Um, I, I, I sought out many help. I have no problem telling people that I came from a, I came from the gutter, man. I came from the middle class background, you know, our, my school tuition fee was 289 rupees. Just because you're in the US, I'll tell you, it's like $5 per year for my school fee. $5 a year. Can you imagine that? That's the, that's the level I came from. And, and another thing you have to understand is when you talk about your failures, your frustrations, your fears, people connect more. Um, you know the guy John C. Maxwell, the leadership expert? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, uh, you know, I was I was on a group call with him once, and he said this line. He said, "If you want, um, if you want people to be impressed, tell them about your success. But if you want people to be impacted, tell them about your failure." Hmm. That's very true. Yes, it is. How can I lie to Jesus? Mm. -mm. <laughs> yeah, man, somebody, I, I i have it written down in my paper the like 40 books that um i saw a video on youtube that are another entrepreneur that i follow he's in, he's from mexico he's really okay. good he only does videos in spanish but he he gave the the books that transform him that he read and and there was a, a book right there from maxwell and all different kind of books and i wrote every single book down in the paper and i was like there you go. So I know which five I'm going to buy right now that I actually need right now at this moment that's going to help me. And because you're an action taker. Right yep. Because you're that's an action taker. Books. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm how a mom. To me, I like reading. I like having the books with me. And yeah. I don't like reading them in, in, in the phone or, or, you know, but sometimes I do, but everybody's different. Everybody likes, look at that. I turned the light on the phone. <laughs> yeah. It was an accident. <laughs> yeah. He but just, hey, everybody he, has their own opinion. Yeah. 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 And it's good that, that, that when you're saying that I don't like reading the book, the phone, the phone, <laughs> you know, the phone came on. Uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's, yeah, everybody has different styles. Uh, so there are three kinds of learners, you know, audio, visual, and kinesthetic. I'm a kinesthetic learner. So audio is people who listen to a lot of audio, audio programs, audible.com. You know, they, they, they listen, they want to listen, like podcast listeners here. I'm assuming 99% of you are. Uh, not 99%, about 60-70% you know, prefer being an audio learner. Then there are the visual learners, people who read books or watch videos. They want, they want the visual. And then there are kinesthetic learners. That's me, where I need to have a mentor, like real conversation, live conversation with a mentor, a group call, speech. That's where I learn the most. most. When I involve myself physically, good books are very good. I respect that I've read you know, hundreds and thousands of the, hundreds of them, uh, audio books, thousands of them. But one thing you got to understand is if you have a question in the middle of the book about you did not understand, the book cannot clarify that to you, back to you. You, you know, a, a, a mentor can, a mentor can. The, the problem we have in the society right now, not about books, but in general information, uh, Jesus, is when, we, when, we, when my teeth is having a problem, we, I go to a dentist. When I need to build a house, I go to an architect, but when I, my life is at turmoil, I go to Google. 
that's a freaking problem right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a freaking problem right there. You need a guide, not Google. <laughs> you need a mentor, not a robot to show you how to how to change your life. If you have mental health issue, you want, you know, you're going through some challenge. If you if you're having some challenges in your in your marriage, don't hide it out. You know, go get some help. Otherwise, you're going to waste so much time. And that's why that's why I don't work with people who are know it all. You know, people who think, oh, my God, I don't need anybody to know that I'm having a public speaking problem. That's the problem. That's the insecurity that is actually stopping you from great, being a great speaker. Get some help. Get a coaching. Get get some coach. I in the Balanced Life Mastermind, I tell people I am. It's a high investment program, money wise. Um, Jesus, it's um, in the new the new program I'm going to launch. The next batch is going to be much higher. It's going to be 25 lakhs. And there are some changes. But one thing I tell people all the time is this. The, the real payment I want from you is not just money. I want blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. That's what it's going to cost you to achieve your great life. I'm going to turn your weakness into greatness. I'm going to take you from where you are to where you want to be, but I'm not going to be a syrupy, sugar-coating, sweetie pie for you at all. I'm going to be tough on you. We do five things in our every coaching session, in every group mastermind we do. Every week we have a session and we meet multiple times a year. Five things. First of all, we celebrate. The good things that happened. You know, you took some action. Tell me about your success, man. In fact, just yesterday I had a mastermind call with all the members. We started with celebration. Tell me what good things you did. In, you know, tell me what went well for, for the last one week. Second, I care front. That's a word that you never heard before no, because it doesn't exist in the dictionary. Care front, meaning care plus confront. I, do, I don't do confrontation. I do care frontation. So I care for people. And that's why I tell them, okay, that's good stuff. Now let's talk about the stuff you did not do so far. Let's talk about the failures. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what you're not doing. Let's talk about the things that you're being stuck at in your career, your money, your health, your in relation. Let's talk about that. Then I coach, third step, coach. So all five C's, celebrate, confront, then I coach them. And I tell them what they need to hear, giving them some step-by-step -step techniques, methods, upgrading their mindset, their skill set, their roadmap, giving them techniques, tricks, strategies, anything for coaching. Then I give them a challenge, fourth C. So celebrate, confront, coach, and challenge. Then I give them a seven-day challenge that here is your homework, baby, because information without implementation equals suicide. I'm not going to let that happen to you. So here's your challenge. Here is how you're going to do that. And here is gonna, how you're going to you know hold here is how i'm going to hold you accountable here is how you're going to update me every single day in the private whatsapp group we have every single day for the next seven days and then they for the next seven days they live a charged up life that's a fifth c so celebrate confront or clear front coach challenge and charged up everybody needs that book does not do that an audio program does not do that a mentor does and, and books are great. I've read so many of them. One of my favorite books is a call, book called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, uh, Expert Secrets, and uh, Tony Robbins' Ultimate Power. Just look at looking at some of the books here in my home office. I've read so much books, but I have seen one good conversation with a mentor outweighs for, you know, 20, 25 books for me. Uh, but again, that's me. That's how I learn because I believe in more practicality. That's how I've transformed my life. But remember, that's not how I started. You know, just reminding everybody that how, how I got started from the daughter in a middle class family did not have anything. Uh, but, you know, if you have the desire to grow, it is absolutely possible for you to you know grow yourself because you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow, leave no stone unturned. Um, and man, Rome was not built in a day. Keep grinding, keep working, keep improving. It's just like right now, man, we're in the new world. Is getting like reinvented so like you had to reinvent yourself you have to reinvent yeah. your business everybody especially the restaurant businesses man they need to super reinvent themselves fast before they shut down a lot of them yeah, are already shutting down yeah yeah real estate business you know movie theaters real estate business too restaurants I mean, airlines, tour and travel there are so many businesses that that did not prepare themselves and I tell people all the time prepare or repair, <laughs> prepare yourself, or you're gonna have to repair yourself. <laughs> so prepare yourself but, but, or repair yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of this people. Is, this is good. God, this is good, man. I mean, Not, this I don't is think good. good. You know that the COVID nineteen is here, but this is you know, what I like said. The technology yeah. we, we right. have, you know, like I man, either you're at home just waiting for your job to call you back, and this is your time to learn something new. This is the time for you to. 
get that skill that you already had that you were afraid, man, let me start. Let me start. Let me start learning how to do my videos. Let me start. You never read. Let me start reading. Let me start using audio. You got all the time at home. So you cannot just be a home. I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that do not watch Netflix or Hulu. That's fine. You got a family. You got to watch some videos and, and movies. But when you're off and you're like, man, let's, let's, let's start. What, what do I want to do? Man? How do I start my business? How do I jump it? So I don't even have to go back to where I was before. I can start my job. I can start my business now to start doing something. And then at the end, you're like, all right, man, woo, I don't even have to go to my job anymore. Man, I got a couple of teams now. I, I hire one person. Man, this is awesome. But I mean, I know yeah. out of this, a lot of a lot of those mindset, they're going to turn. They're going to turn on. I mean, I already see it. I already see it. the education. Oh, man, that thing has to change the education, the future of education. I see a lot of things are going to change on that, too. A lot of the teachers right. are like, man, should I go back? Man, I got the virtual here. I'm good at hi at history. Man, why don't I just teach history here to other students and charge a membership or a subscription? I don't kind of go back to work anymore. I can do it here through my home. So yeah. it's like a lot of things. Like if you put your mindset, you're like, man, it, it, it's the adaptation. It's like, man, let's do it. Do it now. I mean, you don't have to go back anymore. You can just start your own, be humble and start creating your own business, building your team and be humble with them. All of them are going to be interested. That, that's what I always think. Having a team is not having a, I don't see them as an employee. I see them as a, another entrepreneur. I can help them. I can build their wings. And if they want to start their own business or, or they got an idea, I help them out too and let them fly. Let them fly. I ain't going to be mad if they're leaving me, but they're flying and they're going to start their own thing. That's how it's supposed to be, man. To help each other out, the economy is still gonna keep on going on circle because I'm making money. There's still people are uh, wasting money. I'm creating more money. People are cre creating their own business. I'm helping them creating their own business. So it it's a circle. But you still gotta be humble. You gotta think about them as entrepreneurs, as a good people, not just employees that they're just working for you for ten, twenty dollars. You know, that's 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 just to me. That's like it lost the value like in and those major big companies because that's it you're just a worker you're just a worker that they don't care about you it's better to be a warrior in a garden than to be a gardener in a war it's better to be a warrior in a garden than to be a gardener in a war the problem is most people don't do chinta chinta means thinking chinta is a hindi word in it's a hindi is the national one of the national languages in in uh, india and um Chinta is thinking, chin, uh, chinta is sorry, chinta is worrying. You know, there is a difference between thinking and worrying, right? Chinta and chintan. Um, everybody thinks that they are thinking when they are actually worrying. You know, I, I actually every afternoon, not just in the COVID-19, even before that, whenever I'm at home, I go to the terrace of my house. There's a little rocking chair. I put some music in and I, and I just observe the sunset. I just really love that every day, every evening. One thing about the rocking chair, you know, I was thinking about this analogy the other day. If you're sitting in the rocking chair, you're, you know, rolling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what worrying is like. You're going back and forth, but you're not making any movement, baby. Like you're thinking you're making movement because you're sitting down worrying, but you're not making any movement at all. So don't worry at all. You need treadmill, not just rocking chair in life. Treadmill helps you improve your health, not a rocking chair. <laughs> Hey, that's very true, man. That's very true. That's why my mindset changed right now. I, I really do want uh, all of these new projects that I'm working that I told you. I'm already starting doing them in um, the book too. All of the percent that I'm going to create from all that, I've, um, I'm going to create the foundation for the kids. Uh, for nice, the man. kids that have uh, diabetes, autism, all of that they're sick and then uh, support them. Because I know we support adults that have diabetes, support this, but you never hear a lot about, you know, that seven or eight year old has diabetes. I'm like, you never heard that from the news, but you hear from the news about the older people, you know, having diabetes. What about the kids when there's a lot of kids that have diabetes, autism or, uh, or diseases that adults have too, but they don't push that. And I was like, why not? I mean, they're the future. Let's help them now. You never know one of those people that have cancer, they can fight off the cancer. And they can be the next president. They can be the next CEO of McDonald's. But if we don't do that and we don't start doing something now, I mean, come on, man. They, they have a life. They have a, a choice to, to do what they want to do. And I know that their families don't have the money in this. Why not help them? Why not create something where 
everybody can put a little bit of percentage there, like myself, and then anybody else can help want to help. That's gonna go through that just the kids, nothing else, just the kids. I, I love that, man. I love that so much that you're doing this for kids. You know, I, um, I, you know, I give a certain percentage of my income to to the needy people, and also feeding dogs every single day. And I also support a few dog shelters in 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 the locality. You know, who 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 go around treat a lot of dogs. I might not have the time all the time to help them. So you know, there are three levels of contribution: time, tools, and treasure. Um, time, talent, and treasure. Time you you either give time. Uh, or you give talent or you give treasure means money. I'm so happy that you're doing it. And that's how that's the real change. It's not just thinking you got to do it. You got to contribute the money. You know, the last time, you know, people often say money does not make me happy or money is not everything and stuff like that. That's that's really true. Money is not everything. But the last time I actually went to the grocery store, they needed money from me in return. The last time I actually went to, you know, get the, you know, I couldn't go to the grocery store and say, oh, I'm a good person. I'm feeding so many dogs every single day. Please give me free cookies for the entire year. They're not going to do that for me. I have to earn. I can only give from what I have. I can only give from what I have. If I don't have strength, strength, I cannot give strength. And that's why for me, all the money that our business earns, I'm, I'm happy for that, truly really grateful. Money gives me choices. But for me, it's not about money. It's about the choices that I get to make because of the money. And that's why I'm motivated to, you know, to, to reward my team members, you know, in the, in the right way. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm able to add maximum value to our clients instead of being a cheap skate. And it's because, because, the, because of the focus, you know, one of my mentors taught me the secret to living is giving. The secret to living is giving. When you give more, you get more. Um, giving time, giving value. For example, like in 10 minutes, you know, I, I love this conversation today, Jesus, and I can go on and on. But in 10 minutes, I have a um, another conference call from now. I'm going to wrap up soon. But one thing I, I do all the time is any conversation I'm invited to, like a podcast or a show or a TV show, I've been on newspapers and stuff like that. I want to make sure that I give them 10 times more value than they had expected before the show. I want to drop bombs every two, three minutes. You can, if you just go back and you know watch guys, you know, I'm dropping bombs every two, three minutes, like, like bomb, bam, 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 because that's how I gain the attention, but that's how I gain the respect. Many speakers, they talk you know, very good stuff for the first five, 10 minutes. And after that, it like goes down, like the graph goes down. But, you know, how you end people on a high, um, that's very, very important. People should live elevated and they should not feel in any podcast or speech or presentation or phone call that I wasted my time. So that's why the push power to power show is all about, you know, adding more value and reminding people of their power, maybe their power, right? So push power to power. But yeah, man, really had amazing conversation. Got to wrap up soon because I have another call in like eight minutes from now. But man, you're so energetic. Yeah. I'm so appreciative about you. You're so amazing, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. And look at this, man. I went to sleep like at three in the morning yesterday because I was doing some work. And I was like, man, I got to wake up early because I got the interview. <laughs> man, I was about five in the morning. Five in the morning, I was like, open my eyes. I'm like, oh, man, it's already late. And it was like, man, I already slept two hours. But in my mind, it was like, man, I got to do it. It's already here. You know, I already set up the time. Let's get it. But man, right. this was an amazing time. I know I'll definitely have you back. And I know, um, man. Happy I to be here. Now, a lot of people like this. So. Would love to come back anytime you want. You know, just let me know. Would, would love to schedule something more. And um, it's, it's going to be great. And uh, we had such a great conversation so far. Oh, yeah, man. I love that. I took a lot of nuggets. I know a lot of people did. And the ones that didn't, I'm not worried about that because they'll watch the replay and then I'll cut pieces so people will get these nuggets and be like, aha, okay. And they can still watch the whole hour and 20 minutes that we talked because, man, it was great. And it was nothing yeah. about, about um, serving somebody or, or teaching somebody and, and making their aha moments that, you know, if they're on the lows, it's some, they get something out of it. Absolutely. Before we end, you know, one thing, one thing I was having a podcast and if you just yesterday or day before and you know, the last interview, last question everybody asked generally <laughs> is probably you're going to ask that, hey, where can people go find you, you know, more about you? Which website can people go to? And somebody was asking and he was totally startled when I gave my answer. So I told him, look, I know people expect me right now to say, go to my Facebook page or subscribe to me on YouTube or, or go to my website, vishalsarkar.com. I, I said, I'm not going to do any of that. Here is why. I don't want people to get more information. I want people to go ahead and implement what we spoke about today. So I know this is the time like every guest in a, on a podcast says about, please follow me here, follow me there. Even today, I'm going to say the same thing before we end. Don't follow me at all. 
if you respect me stop following me and start doing the work start putting action in everything we spoke about be the warrior in the garden trust and respect the sweating getting a mentor go get a mentor instead of you just listening to me uh, only and coming to my website you can do all that but i want people to go ahead and take action and implement and that's how people become greater speakers greater leaders greater influencers better fathers better mothers better parents and true stewards of god that's being a real steward of god is all about with power and prosperity and persuasion and being the prince of the god so my final words is remember always that public speaking is not about perfection it's all about connection man you ended it up Boop, amazing that's what i'm talking about i learned something new right there see and aha moment right there man <laughs> absolutely thank you brother thank you and um you keep on having a blessed day i don't know what what time is over there in india 9 53 p.m okay so i thought about it it's probably night time over here is yeah. morning time <laughs> yeah yeah true I, i i scheduled a call late night today like 10 p.m i have a call so uh yeah but but man it's such an amazing i think we spoke about like 45 to 50 minutes maximum an hour and we are already one hour 20 minutes 25 minutes because of your energy and the great question you had asked today to to extract um the information and wisdom in this conversation and i'm so grateful for you so thank you and god bless you man God bless you, man. You keep on having a best night and uh, we'll talk soon. I got you. Thank you. And there it is, guys. Thank you. God bless that everybody that was watching the show number one replay i mean number one live number two replay so yeah have a blessed blessed sunday man i ain't got no more words I'm, my mind is just exploded with a lot of uh, um knowledge that i learned today and another knowledge that you learned today so i'm blessed for that and i'm blessed for having uh, this amazing guest and i'm definitely i would definitely have him back so he could teach us and uh, teach us because i'm putting myself in there too and everybody out there man and thank you very much for for joining the push power to power show and your host jesus ortiz that and brought you by yerali media your concept media group and the jesus ortiz blog man amazing 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 I'll, i'll definitely share this again and again and cut some pieces that i know that is very important that is going to help you guys but if you get the chance to watch the whole interview watch it man I'm telling you, I'm gonna watch it again myself because I want to write some of the stuff that I missed that I didn't write. And um, because it's not in here, everything we think sometimes, oh yeah, I got it here. No, man, I want to go back, listen to it, and write it down and apply it on my own, on myself, right? But you guys keep have an amazing Sunday and, it, and and thank you for being here with us today. And uh, I'll see ya soon. Peace out.